This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. Yosef was getting desperate. It had been two months since he opened his hat store in the town of Kovna. He had been sitting there, and nobody came in. A store filled with hats but nobody buying them. Now, how did Yosef end up in this hat store? Well, about a year before, he had been the head manager of a large match factory in the city of Dvinsk. He made a nice salary. He had good friends. He had two young boys that got the best Torah education there was. He lived in a beautiful home, and his wife also made money by sewing and repairing clothes. So, as far as the Jewish community is concerned, this couple was very well-to-do, and they used their money for good things. They gave a lot of tzedakah, and they had a lot of guests on Shabbos and Yom Tov. But then one day, everything fell apart. It was like there was a curse on Yosef. First, the match factory burned to the ground. That's right, the factory burned, and nothing was left. So Yosef was out of a job. Then, Yosef's wife got sick, and none of the doctors could figure out how to heal her. So here they had lost their income from his side and from her side, and quickly they ran through all the money that they had saved. And before they knew it, they had to sell their house and move into a little home nearby. It wasn't what they were expecting. And so Yosef had no choice. He had to go around begging for money. He went from shul to shul in the towns nearby. And each day he would come home and his wife would get up out of bed, raise up her head and say, No, Yosef, how did it go today with the begging? He was just begging for enough money so that they could live. And one day he's begging in a nearby town and he sees a friend of his. The friend says, Yosef, what, what is this you're begging? You used to be the manager of a big match factory, and now you're out begging for money? What happened? So Yosef said, well, the factory burned down and I lost my job. My wife, who used to be able to work as a seamstress, she's been sick and the doctors can't figure out what's wrong. My whole life is falling apart. I don't know what to do. So Yosef's friend, who was a Lubavitcher chassid, he said, listen, Yosef, you got to go see my Rebbe. And his Rebbe at the time was the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rebbe Shalom Dov Bear also known as the Rebbe Rashab. So he said, listen, Yosef, you got to go see the Rebbe. And Yosef said, yeah, but I'm not a chassid. I'm not a believer in Rebbe's. And the chassid said to him, no, how hard do things have to get for you to go to the Rebbe? What difference does it make? So if you don't believe in the Rebbe, you don't believe in the Rebbe, doesn't mean the Rebbe can't still help you. All you have to do is go there. He said, you know what? I have an idea. Ask your wife, see what she has to say. So he comes home from his begging and his wife, she lifts her head up from the bed. She says, no, Yosef, how did it go today? He said, well, it went okay, but I'll tell you an interesting thing. I ran into an old friend of mine, and he heard about our terrible situation, and he said to me, go to the Rebbe, the Rebbe Hashem. And his wife said, no, go to the Rebbe. And he said, really? You want me to go to the Rebbe? And she said, what do we have to lose? Go to the Rebbe. She said, fine, I'll go to the Rebbe. It took him a few days to get to Lubavitch, and when he got there, he had mixed feelings. He didn't like that he was putting his trust in a human being. Wasn't it enough for him just to ask Hashem? But the truth is, he'd been asking Hashem for a while now. And Hashem was kind of waiting, it seemed. And on the other hand, he said to himself, well, the Hasidim trust their Rebbe. They trust him like Moshe Rabbeinu. So maybe I can trust him as well. And a few days later, he had a private audience with the Rebbe called the Echidis. And when he went into the Rebbe's room, he understood why the Hasidim compared their Rebbe to Moshe Rabbeinu. Because he'd never seen anything like this in his life. It was like he was in another dimension. He was transported to another world. The Rebbe listened to Yosef's story, and then he looked up at him, and he said, I suggest you move with your family to the city of Kovna and open a hat store there. Your wife can make the hats, and you'll sell them. And Yosef thinks to himself, hats? I've never sold anything in my life, yet alone hats. He looks at the Rebbe, and he said, hats? And Kovna? Kovna is hundreds of kilometers away from where we live. Why do we have to move so far away? And the Rebbe looked at him, and he said, a hat shop. In Kovna. And with that, the Rebbe looked down at his papers, and Yosef realized that the meeting was over. So Yosef comes back home and tells his wife what happened, and she sits up in bed. And she said, Well, if that's the case, I'd better start working on those hats. What types of hats should I make? And a few moments later, she was sitting behind the sewing machine and working, like she'd never been sick before. 
A week later, they rented a house and a small shop in Kovna. They put up some shelves. He also put a sign outside, a mezuzah on the door, and they were open for business. Now, all they needed were some people to come and buy there. But here he was two months later, and nobody had come to his store. Not a single person had walked in the store for two full months. Maybe the Rebbe was wrong. I mean, after all, he is just a human being. Why did he send me to Kovna? Someplace so far away. I mean, I could have sold hats in Dvinsk. And to come to think of it, why selling hats? This is crazy. Two months, this is crazy. What am I doing here? Then all of a sudden, he hears horses in a carriage approaching his store. He straightens himself up, fakes a little smile, and in walks a very wealthy-looking non-Jewish man with a suit and a top hat and a cane. The man looks around the store, and he said, Hmm, I never noticed this store before. Did you just open? Tell me. Is this everything you have? These are all the hats you have? And then he looks at Yosef and he said, Hey, what's, what's wrong? It looks like you've been crying. Is everything okay? And Yosef, after sitting in that store for two months, he just had to pour out his problems to this stranger. He said to him, You know, I know nothing about hats. And I don't even know why I'm here. My whole life fell apart when my factory burned down, the Mats factory in Dvinsk. And I went to the Labavitcher Rebbe. He told me to sell hats here in Kovna. I don't know what I'm doing here. I've been sitting here for two months and you're the first person to walk in. So the wealthy man, he says, a match factory? You mean you were the manager of a match factory? This is unbelievable. Your Rebbe is a genius. He's like a prophet. Listen, I desperately need you. I have a brother and he has a huge match factory outside of Kiev. You've probably heard of it. It's many times bigger than the one that you worked in in Davinsk. So listen, one of his biggest and most important machines broke down. And for a month now, he hasn't been able to produce matches. It's causing a big problem, obviously, if you're a match factory and you can't make matches. It's because this machine is broken. My brother has brought in all of the biggest experts, and no one can seem to fix it. Listen, clearly, this is divine intervention. You were here for a reason. So what do you think? Come back with me and fix the factory machine, and my brother will make you the manager, and you'll be rich. But Yosef said, listen, I was a manager. I wasn't a mechanic. I don't know anything about fixing machines, but this wealthy person didn't care. He said, let's go. We're going right now. And so Yosef went back home. He told his wife and she said, go, go. See what you can do. What do you have to lose? Shem took us to this point. Maybe the Rebbe is right. And so he went back with the wealthy man to Kiev. And there he is staring at this machine. He knows nothing about machines, but he starts to take one piece off and another piece off. And after three days, he's taken the entire machine apart. And as he was taking everything apart, he was making very careful notes so he could put it back together. He's sitting there with all the parts on the floor. And Yosef says, Hashem, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just a manager. I'm not a mechanic. And I put my faith in the Rebbe. And he sent me to open the store in the middle of nowhere, selling hats. I really have no idea what's going on right now in my life. But what I do know, Hashem, is that if you can help me fix this machine, I'll be able to support my family again. And I'll have a job. And I'll be able to do Achnasat Tochim and have guests for Shabbos and Yom Tov. And I'll be able to send my sons for learning Torah. And I'll be able to help my fellow Jews. So I'm asking you, Hashem, please help me figure out how to fix this machine. And with that, Yosef felt like, okay, if he puts the machine back together, it's going to work. It was just a feeling. He didn't know if it was true or not, and he had no idea what else to do. So following his notes, he put the machine back together. And then he pulls the lever, and just like that the machine starts to produce matches. The owner of the factory comes over and he says, I can't believe it, you're a genius, this is incredible. He said, I'm hiring you to run this entire factory. You're going to be in charge of everything here and you'll have everything you need. And so Yosef became richer than he ever was before and his wife had a complete recovery. And it was then that he understood that yes, the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave him a bracha, but it's really Hashem that was running the world. And all he needed was to have a little faith in the tzaddikim to take him where he needed to go in order to meet the people that he needed to meet in order to have what Hashem intended him to have all along. Ah, 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 ah,
Thank you for listening, my sweetest friends. Wherever you are, and whatever time of day or the week it is, remember that Shabbos is coming. No matter how hard things might get, there's always Shabbos. May you have the sweetest day, sweetest night. Always hold Hashem close to your heart when you need Him most, and even in those times when you feel like you can do it on your own.